everyone. Welcome to our last culinary medicine for right now. Hi, Katie. There you are. Hi, guys. We have a nice big group of people here today. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Katie and I'll see you guys in a sec. I'll try to, um, if you have any questions, go through the chat and I'll try to see them. Um, but Katie, I think, yep, you're going to start with the presentation now. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Rankell. I'm the program director for the UCI Weight Management Program. And today we're going to talk about foods that help reduce inflammation. Okay. So kind of just start with the basics. What is inflammation? Inflammation is our body's natural response to either a foreign object or a bacteria entering our body. It reacts to help protect us and prevent harm from our tissue, our cells. And there's two types of inflammation. So there's acute and chronic. Acute is immediate. Um, I was just up at a lake and we were going off a rope swing and my feet slipped and I grabbed the rope quick and got, you know, hurt my wrist, rope burn. I mean, that's acute, that's instant. You know why it hurts, you trip and fall and it lasts a few days to usually a week until the pain inflammation goes away. Whereas chronic is more slow, progress, can worsen with time, can last months to a year, can even be a lifelong inflammation you deal with. Um, so kind of different types acute would be um, like a upset stomach from a specific food you ate or food poisoning or a headache or pain from an injury, whereas chronic is going to be more like arthritis or, uh, you know, disc compression in your back. That's something long term. Signs of inflammation. There's kind of five typical signs: redness, increased heat sensitivity to the skin, swelling, pain, and loss of function or limited mobility. Okay. So with inflammation, there's no set diet or one magical food that will solve inflammation, but there are foods that help, okay? So we want to use fuel, food as medicine. So when we look at kind of some of the top foods that are popular with reducing inflammation, it's tomatoes, olive oil, leafy vegetables, nuts, fatty fish, lots of different fruits, um, the spiced turmeric, green tea, dark chocolate, and then pre and probiotics. So let's look at those. Tomatoes, the main reason they help with inflammation is the lycopene. That's an anti-inflammatory that helps prevent the production of inflammatory cytokines. So whether tomatoes are eaten raw, cooked, um, in a sauce, no matter how you get them in, you will still be obtaining the anti-inflammatory components. Olive oil, we know olive oil is a healthy fat. It's rich in monounsaturated fats, the good type of fat for us, but it also has a large amount of antioxidants. So it contains oleocanthal, which can also be found in ibuprofen. Um, so that's definitely gonna help with anti-inflammatory components. Dark leafy greens, so thinking darker than your iceberg or romaine lettuce, more like spinach, kale. Um, they help with you know, wound healing. They're high in vitamin K, um, fat soluble. They contain the, the antioxidant alpha linoleic acid. So this can help lower blood pressure, um, cholesterol, prevent hardening of arteries. They also have some omega-3 fats, which have also been shown to help reduce inflammation. So whenever you can get those darky, dark leafy greens in, and again, that can be raw in salads, that can be cooked, added in soups, um, even blended in shakes or smoothies, um, definitely helps with wound healing and inflammation. Nuts and seeds. So we have to watch the portion with nuts and seeds because they do add up calorically. 
um, but they are great for us. So nuts and seeds, um, I'm gonna highlight two here, walnuts and peanuts, but they're all, also high in alpha linoleic acid um, and have omega-3 fatty acids. So walnuts are actually the highest in ALA and omega-3 content and they can lower C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. And then peanuts as well are a healthy type of fat, unsaturated fat, and can lower LDL, the bad type of cholesterol. Okay, fatty fish, or even taking fish oil supplements, uh, most contain you know, the omega-3s, which help with wound healing, reducing inflammation. Um, they say having fish at least two to three times a week. Um, if you're falling short of that, you might try supplementing. Um, salmon, tuna are two examples that are high in omega-3 fats, um, but they can definitely help reduce inflammation, even become a type of therapeutic agent. Fruits, it's hard to pick which fruits to highlight. Um, most fruits and vegetables have some type of anti-inflammatory component, um, but definitely the berries, um, we have to highlight the berries. They are very high in anthocyanin, which can help produce the risk of um, inflammation. They're a good source of other vitamins. We know vitamin C can help with inflammation as well as you know, reducing our risk of infection. Um, so strawberries, raspberries, blackberries would be in there, blueberries as well, very similar. Watermelon is similar surprisingly to tomatoes. It's high in lycopene, so the second highest to tomatoes. Um, so they've been shown, watermelon's been shown in studies to help with rheumatoid arthritis. Also uh, for hydration, these summer months, water is packed with fluid, packed with water. It's a, you know, great for hydration, outside, hot, by the pool, barbecues, um, watermelon's great. Avocado is high in vitamin E. So you may have seen sometimes vitamin E is recommended even topically for wound healing, um, inflammation, as well as, taken in our bodies via food. Um, avocados have numerous benefits, but that's kind of where the anti-inflammatory comes from is the high vitamin E. Turmeric, so turmeric I feel like is getting more, um, it's getting noticed more lately, um, but it's a flowering plant, very common in India and Southeast Asia. Um, it is known for anti-inflammatory, helping with pain, inflammation. Um, studies have shown turmeric has been helpful against heart disease. Um, I read recent studies showing lowering blood pressure, even preventing, helping with cancer, lowering markers for cancer, um, helps with diabetes. There's no real negative to using turmeric as a spice or adding it to your cooking. So if you haven't you know, explored that or experimented with turmeric, it's a great one to try adding and adds a nice flavor. Green tea, um, so it contains um, catechins that help reduce inflammation. Um, they're rich in polyphenols as well, which help fight free radicals, which, you know, the higher amount of free radicals you have in your body can be cancer causing. So that's excellent. Um, as long as we're not adding sugar to the green tea, because um, we'll see in a minute that's kind of counterproductive, but what's in naturally in green tea can help with inflammation. This is my favorite slide. So dark chocolates, also known to help with inflammation, um, packed with iron, magnesium, zinc. Um, again, this is taking the more pure dark chocolate, not adding the processed sugar to it. Um, so the cocoa in dark chocolate is high in flavonoids. So that's where the main anti-inflammatory component comes from, um, helps lower free radicals, prevents oxidative stress. Um, I definitely think a little dark chocolate can help lower stress. Um, it can lower your LDL cholesterol. 
Um, studies have shown a recent one that even could reduce the inflammatory markers in diabetes having, you know, but this is the truly darker chocolate, at least 84% dark chocolate. So some other ones I wanted to not skip over is prebiotics. So prebiotics help promote the growth of beneficial bacteria in our gut and it comes from non-digestible fibers. So examples would be, um, I know we had a, a week where we did, we talked about fiber and kind of the benefits of whole grains, um, but definitely beans, legumes, um, garlic, bananas, artichokes, those are examples of prebiotics. So they help the growth of the natural probiotics in our, our gut, which helps us break down food, di digest it better, and thus less likely to be have inflammation. Probiotics is that live bacteria found in our digestive system. Um, probiotics are most commonly known for being present in yogurts, um, as well as pickles, sauerkraut. There's other food sources. I think the biggest source in our American diet is yogurt. Um, you can take supplemental probiotics as well, um, but it's easy to get naturally from your food. So there's also foods, you know, I don't want to skip over the foods that can cause inflammation, especially if you have acute or chronic inflammation. These foods are definitely going to make the symptoms worse. Um, so the, the swelling, the, the limited mobility, those are going to worsen when we add excessive refined carbohydrates to our diet, which is the simple sugars, white bread, pastries, um, as well as fried foods, French fries, things like that, highly processed foods. So that's more kind of the packaged snack foods, cookies, crackers, chips, um, soda, juices, things that have a lot of added simple sugar to it, as well as higher fat red meats and alcohol. Those can definitely trigger inflammation or make your symptoms of, of inflammation worse. So these would be kind of the top five foods to limit um, or avoid, especially if you're having symptoms of inflammation. Check the chat real fast. So I see I'm looking at the chat real fast. Um, blueberries as well, definitely blueberries would be can, can, um, included with the berries as a superfood for inflammation. Um, pickles, fermented, they, fermented or unfermented, pickles still would have a probiotic source to them. Um, red wine, I see two asking about red wine, um, and red wine would be I, would, I wouldn't include red wine in there. I'd say excessive alcohol could all fall under a cause of inflammation, but if you're having red wine responsibly, a glass of red wine, there's some heart health benefits to it. There is some antioxidants in red wine. So I would exclude that as long as it's being you know, used properly. Um, soda water is not included there. It's the sugar that's added to the sodas that cause the inflammation. So if it's just, you know, infuse bubbles into water, bubbly water, that would be fine. Okay, let me see a few other questions. Farmed or fresh salmon, fish, both have omega-3s. Um, clarify French fries. French fries, it's the oil. It's the oil and the salt added. So if we take French fries back down to a potato, that would not cause inflammation. But when we add the oil and the salts, that's what's going to trigger the inflammation. Green tea, I wouldn't say there's a limit on how much green tea except for the caffeine. Um, so I would look at, you know, individually kind of where should your caffeine be? If you have high blood pressure, that might need to be lowered. Um, okay, let's 
Let's look. So kind of the key takeaways is definitely there's no one set anti-inflammatory food or anti-inflammatory diet to follow. And a lot of people struggling with inflammation, that's one component of their diet. They may also be a cardiac patient or a diabetes patient or watching their weight. So it's gonna be one component that then also you have to look at you know, the whole body and what's gonna work for an ideal meal plan for that individual. Um, but incorporating some of the healthier superfoods, you know, anyone, if kind of the, the trigger foods, if we limited those in our diet, the processed, refined, high sugar, high fat foods from our diet, you know, alcohol and accession, if, if we limited those, that would help improve a cardiac patient, a diabetic patient, an overweight patient, a patient struggling with inflammation. So it's truly some of, a lot of its general healthy guidelines for reducing inflammation, but there's definitely some of those, you know, powerful antioxidants that are higher in those certain foods we looked at that can be helpful. Um, and then the number two, whole foods, you know, focusing on fresh, simple ingredients. Um, we're gonna see some recipes with Jess, you know, that is just looking at, you know, the more we're cooking at home, the more we're starting from raw, fresh ingredients, the better. Um, as well as when you are in the grocery store, if you are buying something, being an informed consumer, learning how to read the food labels, looking at the ingredients, you know, what's been added to the food, how much added sugar, saturated fat, sodium, um, those are kind of all different topics we've looked at different weeks throughout this series as well is, you know, added sugars, fats, sodium, kind of those are the triple we call them the triple threat, you know, the, the sugar, the saturated fat, and the sodium. So we definitely want to, to limit those three. And let me look at the questions here again. So if you bake French fries in olive oil, definitely there's, there's healthier versions to everything. And that's kind of what we see with the recipes um, Jess is showing us as well. Um, if we're air frying a potato using an avocado or olive oil spray or we're baking, those are definitely healthier options. Um, it's all about how often, how much as well. Um, but I would say, yes, those are definitely healthy options that wouldn't you know cause inflammation um let's see when you use sugar, yogurt in baking um ideally the yogurt would be eaten raw for the most probiotics um, you don't lose all the benefits if you're baking or cooking with it um, for vegan or vegetarians who don't eat fish um, the omega-3 supplement um, is a good idea. You can get omega-3s from the walnuts, um, flax seeds. I think we're going to have flax seeds in our recipe today. Um, those are great sources. Um, it might be hard to get enough from that, so you may need a supplementation as well of omega-3s, which is easy to add in. Um, let's see. Sugar-free soda, that's a good question. That's, that's a hard one. Um, it's, it's not proven to cause the inflammation the same as a, a soda with the white sugar added. Um, I think, again, quantity is key there. Um, someone who has a diet soda a day, um, I haven't seen true issues with that, whereas someone who a diet soda replaces their water intake, then I think that becomes a problem. Um, I think that menstrual cramps is a good question. Um, definitely, I think that that is a part of inflammation. There's an inflammatory component to what happens there. So including some of these superfoods um, for that would definitely help. Roasting nuts, raw nuts, um, using nuts in cooking. Uh, I believe Jess is gonna use nuts today. 
does not take away the anti-inflammatory benefits. So I think, I think we're pretty good on the questions. Um, again, my name is Katie Rankell. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. And I work here at UCI Health with the weight management program. And I'm excited to be here with Jess and watch her recipes. And I'll let her address to kind of the temperature um, cooking and heating different oils while she's talking to us. Thank you so much, Katie, for all of these answers, too. And we're going to yeah, get PowerPoint up. Um, it's on the website. So it's on our culinary, uh, sorry, it's on the Campus Rec website. So if you are interested in finding that, um, it's embedded, though, almost. It's all the way inside uh, programs for, um, I think, wellness programs, I believe. So look there and you'll find all our recipes. I've been posting recipes weekly.